That said, this is a special committee of the whole meeting and is comprised of all members of council. The special committee of the whole meeting has been called for the purpose of receiving a presentation and considering a report on a proposed municipal accommodations tax will be known this evening as MAT, I imagine, as well as an update on the county's short-term accommodation or STA licensing program. And no decisions will be made tonight. Today's agenda lists all the items before the committee for consideration. The recommended motions are shown in boldface. Copies of the agenda are provided on the landing and are posted on our website. Today's meeting is being live streamed and any participation in meetings proceedings will become part of the public record. And the recording from today's meeting will be published on the county's website immediately and can be viewed by selecting the streaming tab on the county's homepage at thecounty.ca, the county being all one word. At this meeting, any person in the audience may speak to an item on the agenda for three minutes. Under agen agenda item six, I'll be asking for comments from the audience. Please raise your hands at that time and indicate which agenda item you wish to address. Your name will be included in the special committee of the whole report and form part of the public record and posted onto the county website. We request that you provide a written copy of your remarks to the clerk for the record. When you speak, Please stand at the podium, turn on the microphone, and provide your full name and address, and address your comments to the chair, that being me. Following your deputation, there will be questions from members of the committee around the horseshoe, so please remain at the podium to respond. Any motion made at this point is not final, as I said, until the council meeting of March 10, 2020, at which time council may approve, amend, defer, or otherwise change the motion made by this committee. You may attend the council meeting to see the final disposition of any item from today's agenda, and you may speak again at council, but you will be limited to three minutes unless you register first and are listed on the council agenda. The clerk's office, Catalina, can provide information and advice on this process. There is also a brochure on the landing and posted on our website with information for deputations. As a matter of housekeeping, to exit the building in the event of fire, we have options to jumping. Please use the stairs outside the door of this chamber or the stairs off the committee room to the left. Do not use the elevator. And please turn off or mute your cell phones. And of course, obviously, uh, respect the decorum of council chambers. That being said, in terms of item 1.1, call to order. This is a special committee of the whole meeting has been called for the purpose of receiving a presentation and considering a report on a proposed municipal accommodation tax, MAT, as well as an update on the county's short-term accommodation STA licensing agenda. May I have a motion to confirm the agenda, please? Councillor Bailey. Councillor Margotson. Councillor Bailey, could you read the motion? This is a Bailey Margotson motion that the agenda for the special committee of the whole meeting of March 4th, 2020 be confirmed. All those in favour? Motion passes. Item three, disclosure of pecuniary interests and the general nature thereof. Anybody going to lose or make money on this? None. Thank you. Moves us to item four, presentation. Call upon uh, Todd Davis, our Acting Director of Community Development and Strategic Initiatives, to provide a presentation and overview regarding the proposed municipal accommodations tax under item 4.1. Todd, you're on. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Roberts, Your Worship, members of Council, members of staff, members of the gallery. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today towards uh, regarding the municipal accommodation tax or transient accommodation tax. Presentation today will talk about uh, municipal accommodation taxes and or transient. I will speak a little bit about uh, the PEC Accommodations Association, the tax rate proposed approach phase one and two, our report recommendations, next steps, and I'll be available for questions certainly after this presentation and as we talk about the report. What is MAT or municipal accommodations tax? Municipal accommodations tax is imposed on the cost of a transient accommodations lasting less than 30 days. Uh, it was made a, 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 it was brought into power or force and effect on December 1st, 2017 uh, by the province of Ontario and provides municipalities with the authority to implement a transient accommodation tax uh, or effectively create a new revenue source levied on visitors rather than residents. Uh, the proposal today is to be ap applicable to all roofed short-term accommodations in Prince Edward County, motels, hotels, inns, bed and breakfasts, short-term accommodations, etc. 
And there's a series of exclusions which I will talk to in a few minutes. Uh, as I had stated earlier, uh, municipal accommodations tax is authorized through Ontario Regulation 435-17 as part of the Municipal Act. Uh, it came into effect in 2017. Uh, and in 2018, staff did some figures uh, basing a, a municipal accommodation or a proposed transient accommodation tax at 4% uh, on an annual occupancy of 53% in the community at a rate of $175 uh, would net for the municipality and the tourism industry $836,000. Uh, we believe this to be a low figure, however, I think it's a conservative figure to start with. Uh, prior to bringing forward this transient accommodation tax, we had some work to do in order to, first of all, we identify that a large proportion of overnight accommodations or um, short-term accommodations in Prince Edward County are uh, housed in whole home or partial home uh, STAs, is how we refer to them here. And in order to sort of understand what that marketplace or landscape of that marketplace looked like, we started this process in late 2017. Uh, and through the year of 2018 and 2019, we went through a regulatory, uh, or developing and implementing a regulatory system and a licensing system uh, that we launched in November uh, 2019 and is a report on today as to where we're at with that process. MAD is a common revenue tool. Uh, or generating tool used around the world to support tourism development and promotion. It's generally collected uh, through a percentage on transient accommodation. Uh, and it, in, Prince Edward, uh, in Ontario, industry assumptions through uh, the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario uh, assume that most Ontario communities will be uh, charging a municipal accommodation tax in the next few years. To date, there are over 20 municipalities that have imposed such a tax. In fact, that number is creeping closer to 30, and within the last month, Stratford, Ontario uh, uh, authorized the implementation of a 4% uh, municipal accommodation tax. Currently, uh, we have a destination marketing fee that exists in Prince Edward County. It's industry-led and voluntary, uh, and is collected through the Prince Edward, Comedy, uh, Prince Edward County Accommodations Association, or State PC. State PC has 10 members. Uh, they charge a 2% voluntary destination marketing fee. Um, the proposal would be that once uh, municipal accommodation tax was passed and put into place, that that fee would collapse uh, and that uh, Matt would take its place. Uh, as the collector of the destination marketing fee, State PC is was what's considered to be an eligible tourism entity, which is a not-for-profit organization involved in destination marketing and development. And members of that association are here tonight. Before we get into RAID, I wanted to, to define what accommodation means uh, in this community and, and in communities in Ontario, because there's been a lot of questions. Uh, accommodation is lodging, whether in a hotel, motel, motor hotel, lodge, inn, resort, bed and breakfast, or other establishment providing lodging and the right to use lodging that is provided for consideration. Typical exemptions, uh, as stated under the, the legislation, uh, from um, exempt from collecting a mat tax or, or, for, or some type of transient accommodation tax would be the Crown and every agency of the Crown in the right of Canada and Ontario. Um, to make that sort of more common speak, that would include places like Sandbanks Provincial Park, as an example, uh, as an as a entity of the Crown. They would be exempt as per that regulation. Educational facilities, universities, colleges, school boards, hospitals, long-term care treatment facilities, shelters, houses of refuge, emergency shelters and hospices, um, employee housing tends to f fall outside of the uh, transient accommodation tax. And to date, uh, most municipalities in Ontario have exempted a tent or trailer site uh, supplied by a campground, tourist camp, or trailer park. Uh, we did a bunch of research out of all of the municipalities that collect this tax. Only two of them have in, uh, included campgrounds. Uh, other exemptions tend to be group bookings, 
uh, and uh, to be uh, any booking that is made and paid for prior to the implementation of the tax. So any uh, organization that has uh, taken a booking and collected the fees for that booking prior to the implementation of said tax uh, would be exempt of paying tax on that booking, whether it's further in the future. MAT tax rate, the municipality gets to set the rate. There is no upper or lower limit generally, although uh, across Ontario, uh, our research tells us that that rate is, the recommended rate is 4%. Every other municipality in Ontario, with the exception of one, charge 4%. One community charges 5% and Niagara Falls charges a dollar per room. Uh, however, they have a voluntary destination marketing fee that, is, uh, that doesn't just, uh, isn't just accommodations businesses but all tourism businesses in, the, in Niagara Falls charge a destination marketing fee of a uh, percentage of sales uh, and so they don't, need, they don't feel comfortable charging uh, extra tax on rooms. Our proposed approach would be to implement a rate of 4% uh, that the municipality would act as the tax collector uh, based uh, on authorities that we have under the Municipal Act. Uh, we would proceed to a voluntary uh, f uh, or uh, 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 remittance of funds process much the same as is done with businesses collecting HST through the Canadian Revenue. Uh, and then we're proposing that June 1st be the effective date for the tax, knowing uh, in advance that for most uh, summer accommodations in Prince Edward County in high season, those rates, those accommodations would be booked and paid for prior to a June 1st date. Uh, and so that there would be a much, much more limited amount of money collected in this calendar year, but would set us up nicely to collect uh, a full mat or have a full municipal or transient accommodation tax season in 2021. I'll stay on phase one. Collection would be, or collection is done at the time that accommodation is purchased. 4% uh, would have to be a separate or would be identified as a separate item or charge on the bill, receipt or invoice or similar document, and would have to be labeled municipal accommodations tax as per the uh, legislation. Remittance is typically uh, a date 30 days after uh, the proposed period. We would propose a quarterly remittance schedule so that uh, uh, taxes would be collected in the first quarter ending March 30th, 31st. And then a month later, the taxes would be collected similarly throughout the quarters of the year. Uh, any business that didn't meet the remittance date uh, would be subject to some uh, type of late fee calculated according to uh, Section 400 of the Municipal Act allowing us to charge a 1.25 uh, per month uh, penalty. Uh, the process could also include or likely will include incorporating collection agreements with online booking platforms. To date the only online booking platform uh, that will collect and remit municipal accommodation tax is Airbnb, uh, but Airbnb is only one of the platforms that is uh, in play in Prince Edward County. We also have HomeAway, Vacation Rental by Owner, and a series of other uh, platforms within which bookings are done, and a number of the traditional uh, roofed accommodations like hotels, inns in this community do not uh, rent all of their rooms. Uh, through Airbnb. Airbnb can't be the ultimate solution for us because at the end of the day, our, the responsibility to administer said tax is at, the, is at the hands of the municipality. It's our tax. We have to administer and collect it. We have the ability to enforce under um, Section 400 of the Municipal Act. It allows us the uh, opportunity to, to uh, uh, include in interest penalties. Uh, we can ask for audits and inspections of books uh, related to, to verify that self-remitting organizations um, are remitting the correct amounts. We also have administrative penalty potential. Business licensing renewal uh, can be contingent on full, p uh, full fees being paid. And we can also add uh, any uncollected fees to the uh, tax roll at the end of the season, at the end of the year. 
why June 1st? Certainly this is a topic of hot conversation. Uh, we've received, uh, I know Council has received a number of different emails and concerns from industry and the community. Um, we suggested June 1st because that represents the fastest possible timeline that we can bring the resources to bear uh, to administer this tax, knowing full well that we won't collect a full version of the municipal accommodation tax in 2020, but it would allow us the season to sort out some of the challenges and issues uh, so that we would collect a full tax uh, in, in the 2021 season. The later we push uh, the implementation of said tax back, um, will have greater impacts in following tax seasons. If we waited until, I know there will be a number of proposals tonight, uh, to push this back to January 1st, 2021. Any booking that is made or paid for prior to January 1st will not be subject to the MAT tax, which means that we would not collect a full municipal accommodations tax prior to or in 20, the 2021 season, which means that we wouldn't actually see uh, the full benefit of this tax until 2022. Moving on to the second phase of the, pro once the tax is, uh, the bylaw is passed, the tax is, uh, date is uh, set and implementation can start. Uh, we are proposing a series of industry and public consultations to take place throughout the summer um, to determine how to allocate uh, the proceeds of the tax. Uh, the, the goal of this tax is to be net um, neutral to the municipality, meaning that the administration of the tax comes off the top and then the, the proceeds are split into 50-50. 50% of those funds must be used to support tourism infrastructure. Uh, and we would ask that the industry and the public consult or provide feedback so that council has the benefit of their input as to how those funds could be spent and what infrastructure is important to members of the community. The second 50% uh, of funds are to support tourism promotion and development in this community, uh, at which time we would ask for a wide ranging industry consultation uh, that would support or give us some direction as to how those funds should be spent going forward. Upon completion of the public and industry consultation process, recommendations would come, for, come forward to Council on how the MAP funds should be spent. We anticipate that that would be prepared and ready to go by the end of quarter three. We're also looking at that timing to include some findings as to some of the work that we're doing in our depart department this year around business retention and expansion. This year, the tourism industry has been selected and we have already started the process of interviewing local businesses. The goal is to interview 90 tourism businesses in Prince Edward County this year and be able to report those findings at the same time. And we've undertaken a process of developing a tourism master plan so that we have a better understanding uh, as to how industry wants uh, to be um, these dollars to be spent and how we go about promoting tourism in the future in Prince Edward County, understanding the sensitivities between the industry itself and the residents of the community. The recommendations tonight on the report are six. Uh, start with receiving the report, uh, approving the implementation of the tax uh, on all short-term accommodations in Prince Edward County at a rate of 4%, that we approve implementation on June 1st, uh, that we approve the municipality to act as the tax collector, which is a role that we're very good at, uh, and that the council endorse the approach uh, by staff for phase two that will focus on public and industry consultation to help determine how those funds be spent and allocated with the report back to council in fall 2020 and that you authorize staff to take all actions necessary to implement this tax program as outlined in the report. Next steps would be a bylaw to come forward to council on March 10th. A communications campaign to be started uh, and announce the new uh, municipal accommodations tax and finance the plan for and staff uh, the fi and finalize the remittance process. That's my presentation. Happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you, Todd. Uh, I'd like to get the motion to receive on, on the floor, if that's okay. Uh, could I have a motion uh, to move, uh, Ernie? Thank you very much. 
Yeah, Prinzen, that guy. Margitson Prinzen motion that the presentation and overview provided by Todd Davis, Acting Director of Community Development and Strategic Initiatives regarding the proposed municipal accommodations tax mat be received. Thank you. All those in favor? Councillor Bailey. Todd, if you don't mind, um, you mentioned stay PEC as an eligible tourism entity. Can you explain to me what that means overall? Uh, absolutely. So in sort of layman's terms, perhaps, uh, when we talk about, uh, so it, when we bring a, a municipal accommodation or a transient accommodations tax to a community, uh, the province wanted to acknowledge the fact that other destination uh, marketing fees were already being collected voluntarily by organizations who were involved in the promotion of tourism in this community. So when we went out and looked at who was promoting tourism and collecting uh, destination marketing fees, uh, it was identified to us that State PEC existed as a, a grouping of 10 accommodators. Uh, you will hear from them shortly, I believe. Um, and uh, they had been collecting a 2% uh, uh, accommodations uh, or uh, marketing fee in the community. And so the responsibility of the municipality is to ensure at the very minimum that that organization is made whole. Uh, so they collect on average somewhere over $100,000 every year. And so the, the responsibility of, our, of this tax is to ensure that there is no negative financial impact to that organization uh, so that they can carry on promoting destination, the destination in the community. Absolutely. Uh, are they a business as such? Are they incorporated as such? They're a, an incorporated not-for-profit uh, organization that's, that's sole purpose is to promote uh, or uh, to, uh, to try and maximize the number of heads and beds, as the accommodation sector like to say. Uh, and so uh, they, they are a, a, a formal affiliation of 10 organizations. I would imagine they would welcome more. I don't want to speak for them, but uh, uh, they have been collecting a voluntary destination marketing fee since 2018 uh, and using that to promote uh, accommodations and tourism in Prince Edward County since then. Other questions, clarifications? Kate? Thank you. Todd, um, what about artist residencies if they weren't on the list? Are they exempt? Or do we know yet? We don't. We uh, don't. I mean, I could. I would have to do some research and find out. They are not. Uh, I mean, I guess we we had considered an exemption of employees. Uh, oh, so I would so maybe far. classify. I would consider that to be uh, employee housing. So an artist residency may be an employee house. Okay. So yeah. there are exemptions <laughs> for employee housing, even if they're quite short. Yes. Good. Thank you. Other questions? For yes. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you to, to Todd. Uh, you, you've mentioned that the municipality is an L, L, I'm following up on Councillor Bailey's uh, mm -hmm. question. Uh, you've mentioned that the municipality is an eligible uh, tourism entity and state PEC is. Um, do you anticipate any other groups coming forward and how would they qualify if they do come forward? Uh, through the chair to Councillor St. Jean. I don't anticipate there to be any other uh, eligible tourism entities. Not to our knowledge, no one else has been collecting a voluntary destination marketing fee. Um, we may be surprised between now and March 10th to find out that there are other entities out there, but I don't anticipate that we, will, we would see anybody else that's collecting a destination marketing fee in this community at this time. Other questions? Um, I have two, Todd. Okay. Um, Todd, when you referenced uh, the 90 interviews, um, have you, are you doing this by way of some kind of weighted balance to the kinds of accommodation categories we have in the county in terms of hotels, resorts, bread and breakfast, STAs? Is that part of your so consideration? To so to respond uh, through you to you, um, the the business retention and expansion it supports the entire tourism sector. So it, we are waiting. It uh, there are some accommodations, and we're trying to to get a balance of the various forms of accommodation. But that's not the only elements of the of the interview. We're interviewing hospitality businesses uh, and other tourism attractions in the community that provide services to to tourism. So it's a the goal is to get a, a, an entire picture of the sector, not just the accommodation sector. Thanks, Todd. 
Uh, one more uh, th through me to me question. Um, I've had a couple of emails from short-term accommodation entities that are concerned about breach of contract. For in, I think what they're getting at is that uh, they've already made these bookings. They have not mm. been paid in full, but the bookings have been made on the basis of a certain rate or mm. cost. Um, is have you done this sort of legal check to make sure that this these STA owners don't have to be concerned about breach of contract in this regard? Uh, through you to you. Uh, so we have done one of the exemptions we would say suggest is a group booking uh, that has uh, has signed a contract would be exempt from the tax uh, from the implementation date with maybe a sunset clause at the end of the year so that anything that's collected or booked going forward into January 2021 uh, would then be eligible. So we've done some of the research on that and we are confident that anything that's booked and paid for and or any contract that exists in place would be exempt from being charged the tax. Okay, maybe I misspoke my question. My question was an STA, a farm STA makes up, yeah. has a booking. That booking is based on a certain rate structure and cost to the family coming mm -hmm. to that STA. Um, but they haven't paid in full. If the uh, com mat is a 4% introduced after the fact, do these STA owners have to be concerned that there's some legal exposure to them in terms of breach of contract for having made the booking at a certain rate structure? Uh, I would have to seek some advice to ensure that there would be no breach of contract in place. We can always, uh, one of the amendments we could make uh, to the bylaw would be to exempt any bookings made uh, and down payments made on those but not fully realized at this stage to ensure that nobody uh, was going outside the boundaries of their contract. Okay, well, we'll, no. we'll come back to that in the other discussion. Sure. Any other questions from, from councillors? No? Thank you very much, Todd. Well done. Good. All in favour of the motion, please. Thanks for the nudge there, Stuart. All right, that moves us to item five, deputations. We have Jason Sharp, President, and Richard Barrett, Treasurer of the Prince Edward County Accommodation Association to address committee regarding the municipal accommodation tax. Welcome, Jason and Richard. Is the mic on? Oh. Your Worship, members of council, staff, members of the gallery, thank you very much for allowing us to make this deputation this evening. Um, the the MAT tax is a very important piece of legislation and we uh, appreciate the opportunity to give you some of our feedback. We support this municipal accommodation tax and commend staff for setting uh, the rate at 4%, which is the norm for the area. Stay PEC, or the Prince Edward County Accommodation Association, um, represents 715 beds and 312 full and part-time employees throughout the county. Our seven member board and executive director have over 100 years of combined experience marketing, managing, and operating accommodations here in the county. Since the beginning of 2018, we have been collecting a voluntary 2% destination marketing fee from our guests. Our goal is simple. We want to put heads in beds in Prince Edward County in the shoulder season, in the winter season. None, none of our focus is in the summer. <clears throat> we are here to answer any of your questions, uh, but before we do so, I would like to comment uh, on uh, the proposed imp implementation date of June the 1st and make a couple of comments of Todd presentation. We certainly can appreciate the desire to implement the tax as soon as possible, but we f feel that uh, the June 1st implementation date is just too early. June 1 is exactly one month before our high season. Many accommodator, accommodators have already accepted bookings and taken deposits for bookings that will have arrival dates after June the 1st. To go back to these guests and collect an additional 4% is not an option. Guests have entered into an agreement, as you have 
suggested with accommodators at an established price and we must honor that price. As indicated in Todd Davis's report, uh, CDD 16-2020, fewer than 10% of the potential 900 STAs have been licensed so far. How many of these 900 potential STA licenses will still be pending on June the 1st? Is it the intention that non-licensed STA, STA operators will be collecting a MAT tax? And how will that be tracked? We would highly, highly recommend that the implementation tax, 4% uh, MAT, be revised and uh, implemented January the 1st, 2021. And by doing so, we can have phase two uh, occur before we start collecting the money. So people have an understanding, you can buy in. To have a phase one, grab the money, throw it in a reserve fund, and not know how it's going to be dispersed for marketing and other uses, I don't think is a very good approach. Um, and there was a question asked by Councillor Bailey, I believe, about uh, if there are any el other eligible tourism entities. I'd like to point out that we are, in fact, an eligible tourism entity, but we were also, as defined in uh, the legislation uh, uh, 43517, we are a destination marketing program. We are the only destination marketing program in the county. And um, there are two different ways you can interpret that uh, Regulation 43517, one option is you're a pre-existing destination marketing program, which we are, and the other option is you create a, a program after the tax has been put into place. So it's very different, and um, you'll have to bear that in mind as you're deliberating. On behalf of, uh, on behalf of the Board of the Prince Edward County Accommodation Association, State PEC, we would like to thank council and staff for allowing us to make this input. We realize that this tax is needed here in Prince Edward County, and we look forward to closely working with council and staff to strategically promote and effectively manage tourism in Prince Edward County for the years to come. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions from Council? Uh, I'll jump in. Um, so, on the one hand and on the other hand. <laughs> um, on the other hand, all levels of government introduce regulations and new tax regimes all the time. And they, generally speaking, do so to maximize uh, the infrastructure support of the new tax regulation, and, and the revenues associated with that. So I think what we heard from Todd is that's in the municipality's best interest. So my question is, if, if you, could you or could you not absolutely accommodate, no pun intended, uh, the June 1st introduction of MAT? Well, for my business, we are a TECO certified business. That's the tra uh, Travel Industry Council of Ontario. Mm -hmm. And it is forbidden under the uh, rules that we have to follow to go back to somebody that we've already made a reservation with and say, hey, guess what? We need another 4%. It's not possible. Uh, we would be violating our, um, our, um, the rules you know, that Tico has set it forward, um, meaning that if you did go with June 1st, that would come out of our pocket. So it's very problematic. Are there questions from councillors? Mayor? I could just have a clarification. What does that legislation work for? 435-17. That is the MAT tax legislation. Do you have a follow-up, Steve? No. Councillor Maynard? So, just for clarification, because this is a, because this is a tax and not an extra fee, say the province decided that they were going to bump the sales tax up by a, a percentage point it would you know it, it would just happen so i think because I, that's is, is there any um 
your understanding because this is a tax this isn't an extra fee this isn't an increase in the room rate this is a, um, a legislated tax that's being imposed I don't remember having a long time frame on uh, when they when they increase the um, when we got a harmonized sales tax mm -hmm. for example whether we had a deposit mm -hmm. on an item or not you I didn't own it, it the tax came saying. into effect, and everyone was uh, obliged to obliged to pay. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember the last time there was a um, HST went up or when it was harmonized. So I can't speak to that. Councillor Saint Jean, did you have your hand up? Councillor Margaretson. Yes, Richard. I'm. I'm curious about the TICO. That's a an organization that you belong to. Correct. And they have some standards or well it's an organization it's an organization that we are required by law to belong to uh tico is a um a division of the um it, it's part of the uh, uh tourism uh, department ministry of tourism in ontario oh. so it's every they treat us as a travel agency so any company that is involved in providing travel guidance that involves an overnight stay, you are required by law to be a member of TICO. So we are a member of TICO, and TICO is very particular about protecting the consumer on different issues that relate to pricing. So I'm sure that we would be in violation of our TICO agreement. Or so you're, so you're sure it applies to a tax and not the rate that you're I charging? Am. I think I that's important I can't be sure to us. about the tax. Okay, well, yeah. that's that's important, and maybe we'll get yeah. that clarification from staff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions from staff? Um, if if you have that uh, language, TICO language, handy, uh, perhaps it could be forwarded to staff. That would be that would be. Yeah, handy. I can try to. That'd be great. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have we put the motion on the table? Yes, I believe we have. No? It's on the table. So. No, it's not. Has the deputation received? All right. I'd like to move a motion that the deputation be received. I'd like a mover and a seconder, please. Sure. Kate and Ernie. All those in favor? So carried. Thank you very much. Thank you to the deputants. We now move to comments from the audience, items on the agenda. Could I see a show of hands as to how many folks wish to speak? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go with seven just to be safe. Um, all right. Um, make your way to the podium. One at a time. One at a time. <laughs> All right, hello, there we go. Uh, my name is Sarah Doran, and I'm the manager of the Picton BIA. Uh, Picton was established as a, pic as a business improvement area by the municipality in 1991, and today it remains the only official BIA in the county as defined by the Municipal Act. I'm here this evening because the Picton BIA Board of Management is interested in being included as one of the eligible tourism entities to receive a small percentage of the municipal accommodation tax. Picton is the largest urban community, I say urban in quotation marks, uh, serving the residents and visitors of Prince Edward County. And currently all of our funding comes from a levy on commercial property taxes. The BIA Board of Management sees the MAT as an opportunity to increase revenue, to enhance the experience of visitors to Picton and the county by using the funds of the visitors and not of the taxpayers or commercial property owners. You might also be interested to learn that the Huntsville BIA is currently receiving an annual sum from their MAT, which was adopted in April of 2019. We're hoping to follow this precedent so that we may provide a better experience for visitors in the shoulder season, which would in turn benefit the businesses and residents of both Picton and the county. 
So I understand that you're not yet at the point of determining the recipients of this new source of revenue, but I do look forward to following the developments of this project, and I'd be happy to speak with any members of council or staff should they have any questions. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't go away. Don't go away. Um, are there questions from councillors of the, of the comments? Phil? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I think Todd now understands where my question was coming from. Uh, full disclosure, I'm the Picton BI, the council representative on the BIA, for those that don't know. Uh, Sarah, the, since uh, the inception of the Picton BIA, the BIA has been doing, uh, as an integral part of their, uh, uh, the funds that they spend, uh, doing destination marketing. Am yes. I correct? Uh, somewhat. Somewhat. Yes. We're here to promote the businesses of Picton and promote the area as a place to shop and play. Yes. Okay. So it, it could be uh, the, the term eligible tourism entity could, in your, your mind, naturally apply to the BIA. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Other questions? Sarah, I have one. Um, as the Picton BIA, have you been in touch with other organizations like the Wellington BIA on this subject? Um, unfortunately, uh, d due to timing and capacity, I have not had that opportunity, but we'd absolutely be open to working with the other business associations in the county. That would be, uh, I think, a great partnership to form. Okay, good. I don't see any other questions, so th thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Who are you and what do you want? <laughs> My name is Rick Conroy. Tonight I'm here on behalf of Newsroom Suites in Wellington. Mm -hmm. And hello all. The folks being asked to carry the water for this brand new tax don't know it's coming, present company excluded. Moreover, most don't know that you plan to impose it upon them in 90 days. The stream of calls and emails I've received since my column landed last week all start the same way. Is it true? I, I can't believe it. The communication and rollout of this new tax regime has been poor. During budget deliberations, you heard your new CAO, Marcia Wallace, say no fewer than a dozen times over four days that big changes were coming, but that stakeholders would be consulted. I believed it. It sounded reasonable, responsible. But on the very first, very first big change out of the gate, there's scarcely been any consultation with the folks who will be directly affected. Indeed, there was more consultation for a pilot program to test clear garbage bags in Wellington than there has been for a brand new tax. Why is that? Do these folks not matter? Is this constituency just too small to warrant a whisper of consultation? Had you heard from these folks, you would have learned that there is broad-based support, and you've heard that already among the sector for the Met, myself included, or at least the recognition that it was inevitable. This support will be crucial to you and to the success of this new tax. You would have also learned that June 1 is a terrible time to implement a new tax on this sector. Most accommodation businesses are small and lack the administrative capacity and wherewithal to manage a new tax regime just at the upswing of their season. You would have learned too that this is a partnership. Partnerships require trust and accountability. You are asking these small businesses to enter into an arrangement in which you will share a stream of their revenue, but will sort out somewhere down the road how that money is to be spent. You would do it in your own business and it's disrespectful to ask these folks. 
Finally, you have a Community and Economic Development Commission whose sole job it is to mediate between community and business leaders and to inform municipal policy making in areas that directly affect them. This is what the CDC was created to do. Yet this commission was entirely bypassed in the development of the map. What is the purpose of the CDC if not to provide a communication link between those affected and the municipality? And I point to our friends at the BIA as Exhibit A. There's going to be a stream of other folks who are going to raise their hand. We haven't heard from them. How, how are we going to process? So what is the CDC for? If not this, what is it for? I'm urging you tonight to pull back from the brink, let the CEDC do its job, hear from your partners, give them ample time to prepare, set a new target for January 1, and let's work together. This begins with a conversation. Thank you. I, I wanted to touch on just one other point, if you'll indulge me. You made the point, and, and Janice made the, uh, uh, Councillor Maynard made the, uh, made the point, well, taxes go up and down. They change variably. Yeah, but we, when we bring in whole new taxes, there's a big, big process. They start many years in advance. They involve many consultations with the chamber, with businesses, with organizations, accounting firms, and there's an education process that flows through. There's no tax that has ever just been popped up in 30 days, and here you go, and away we go. So that's my, my experience. So that's don't, my comment. Don't go away. Yeah. Questions from councillors? Councillor Maynard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you. So, Rick, I know you've been following this discussion over the past three plus years. So, you're saying that you have not heard or reported on the fact that the whole, when we started down the road of uh, instituting STA regu regulations, the impetus to that was a uh, desire by council to derive uh, some revenue to offset the uh, offset the the expenses that that are incurred by the municipality. Sure. So this has been an ongoing conversation for over three years now, and I'm pretty sure Matt Tax has been mentioned numerous times and was incorporated into the uh, consultation with uh, the STA regulations as the uh, what would be coming next. So it seems somewhat disingenuous that uh, that that people are not aware that this was going to that this was going to happen maybe not the specific details but i'm just saying well me personally I mean, you, or the, yes, the broader well, you public personally and uh, me personally i know and remember too that we intentionally delinked detached sta from the map for the very purposes that people were getting them confused so we took one we said do this and we'll do this and then we'll come back Yes, we've been talking about it for, I, I'm conscious of that, I'm aware of that, primarily because my, my job and my, my role, so yes, I'm conscious of that. What I'm telling you is that the, the numbers of emails and calls that you've been getting this week are just the beginning because I'm getting a stream of folks who have no idea this is coming toward them. And that is just really poor. And just as a, as a follow-up, if I may, on the uh, question of the CDC, the, the uh, Community Economic Development Commission, I mean, you're aware that, that uh, the MAT tax is neither on their work plan or part of their, uh, their strategy. So it's not something that the commission has been asked or is in their uh, purview to necessarily be the ones that, uh, that do the public consultation for, for such. Okay, but why? Why isn't it? I, I, Help me to understand that because if, if not this, then I, I've got s serious questions about what the CEDC does. Right? If not this. Councillor Maynard, well, are you yes, done or do we you have a will. supplement? No, I'll, I'll. So there's a bit of inside baseball going on here. So, for purposes of clarity, 
Uh, Rick, would you uh, explain to the people watching through streaming yes. and in the audience what your yes, role is fair. with the CEDC? That's fair. Yes, I sit as uh, I sit as a member um, since the beginning of this term, so a year and well, just just about a year now, uh, as a member of the CEDC. I, I currently sit as chair of that commission. Um, I don't want to leave the wrong impression. I think it's a very worthwhile organization, worthwhile group, and it does good work. This should, belongs ex right in its right in its bailiwick. Thank you. And I, I, I'm surprised at Councillor Maida makes the point that we knew this was coming. Yes, if you were conscious and paying attention to, again, as you describe inside, inside baseball, we knew the mat was coming. And as I've said, virtually no one I talked to has an objection to the mat. But to pull it all together at the beginning of March and want to implement it by June 1. Mm -hmm. I think you've done a good job making your point. Are there other questions for Mayor Ferguson? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> just, just for clarification, Rick. Yes. So the, um, from the people you've talked to, the the research you've undertaken, there is no argument about the tax itself. I haven't heard. I haven't heard serious. No. I mean, you're gonna you're going to find some folks who just rather not. But again, that's the key reason why you want to do it well. It's because there's always going to be leakage. There's going to be, you've got to do it well, right? And, or, we or you don't get buy-in, right? You don't get, and that can be another problem, set of problems. So no argument about the tax itself, no argument about the rate. No argument about the rate. Okay. The, um, I, I, I must concur with, with Councillor Maynard in suggesting that um, conversation about about the introduction of the MAT in 2020 has been very widespread. So, and I'm not arguing that there aren't others, that there aren't people that, that are unfamiliar with it. I've spoken to some of them this evening, but I, I want to, I, I just wanted from your standpoint or your perspective, clarification that the race not an issue nor the um, nor the uh, the entire concept of it. No, uh, no. From my perspective, no. And again, to me, the big thing is consultation. You could have worked. We could work out a whole bunch. There's a whole nest. You're going to get a sense. You've already got a sense from the BIA. What other BA? What other groups? The chamber? What other groups are going to be? There's a whole nest of problems or nest of issues that are going to be popping up that you could have sorted through. We could have sorted through better. Had we uh, had there been better consultation? Okay, All right. Yep. Councillor Margetson. Yes, thank you. Um, through the chair to Rick. Yes. Rick, I, I, it's kind of on the same vein as what uh, Mayor Ferguson said. I, you said right at the end that no one you've talked to has an objection to the tax. Correct. It's the time frame yes. of implementing it, and some of the issues you raised, I thought, were better handled within the phase two, which we are, we are um, going to have our consultation and we have that set up within the next six months. So it's basically just having the operators, the accommodation operators being ready to collect it and account it and remit it after June 1st. That's basically what you're saying other than the CEDC stuff. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying there's another, there's another point that maybe I just went over too quickly, which is this notion of a partnership. You need these folks. You need these folks to help you to get this done. This isn't, again, I know you're new to the taxation business, as we all are, no one, but you, these folk, you need these folks to be your partners, to work with you. And if you, if you start out the gate and saying, you know, we're going to... We're, 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 we need you to grab all this money, send it our way, and we're going to work out the details later. Not a good way to. Well, we can work, follow up. Just we can work out those details. I'm hopeful on on the phase two, and 
I feel that if, if most of, or if not all, don't object to it, we've covered pretty much the first part at being a buy-in or a partnership that we all know we have to work together on. So I'm not totally convinced on your argument, but. Fair enough, but I, I'm just ask you again, is that an arrangement you would get into here? Here's the money, we'll figure out the, t we'll figure out the term details later. I, I, I just don't know, I don't, I don't think we would. I don't think anybody would. I think it's an unreasonable request. Are there other questions for, for Rick? Moment. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Our next commentator. Hi, I'm new here. I've been here two years, and I run a facility that we rent out. Could we have and, your name, please? Well, my name's, uh, well, I'm reluctant to give my name because I, I don't want the exposure. Uh, my name's Bob Kelly. Okay, but I've been here two years, and in defense of Rick, I only heard of Matt two days ago from the, col from the paper that, the column that he wrote in the Wellington Times. My wife wrote it to me. Uh, that's all I've been doing for the last two days, is trying to familiarize myself with it. So I'm part of the business. You've been telling, you know, I've, I've heard a few times here that I should know. Well, I think maybe you should have communicated to me to my office, to my home, to my business, what you were planning on doing, because I'm concerned that you've identified an amount of $836,000. 50% of it's going to stay in this pocket, 50% is going to promote tourism, and you don't even know who you're going to be getting the money from. Mm. Like how many people are, you know, how many people are out there, you said, 900 uh, businesses? How many people do you expect to be remitting? Like all I hear is STA, STA. Like so, I own a trailer. So, do I have to pay tax on a trailer that's not in Sandbanks? It's in Sherry Beach. Do I have to pay that? Somebody going to? Somebody going to answer? We'll bring that. I think we'll be sure to ask that question when we come to that part of the agenda. Oh. Okay. But sort of, it, if you've, you've got a few, at least another minute left, so. Well, that's, I just don't know. So if we're going to be voting on this like March 10th, or if we're going to be talking about this further, well, how can I be informed if I don't know whether I'm even affected? Okay. All right. And I agree with Rick. I think it's been handled poor. I think it's out poorly. Um, I know there was just a recent election. I didn't hear about Matt in the election. And if we needed all this money, or had plans to have this money, it should have been talked about in the, in the election when you have everybody's ear. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Okay, don't, don't go away in case there are questions. Are there questions? Thank you, thank you. We'll raise the trailer question later. Yeah, what's well, a trailer in the Cherry Beach? It's a trailer in Quinty Park. I mean, a lot of people rent trailers there. Do I pay it? Do I, do I remit it? Do I charge it? And as far as getting operators, I don't know how many operators here get paid 100% of their bill by June 1st, but I know I don't, you know, I have to beg and borrow and plead from my customers to get their deposits, let alone getting paid in full. So I'd like to hear from some of the other operators if they're getting paid in full. Maybe I need to do something different. Yes, sir. Councillor Margaretson? Thank you. Sorry, Bob. I did have a quick question for you. Um, is your business a trailer park? Is that is that what I'm understanding? No. Oh, it's not. Okay. No, it's not. Uh, my business doesn't fit into your category of uh, your listing. Okay, so you're not um, renting trans well, for transit. Well, no, I, I I think that you expect me to remit you money. What I'm saying but is, but you don't is, fit in. No, it doesn't say my name on it. Okay, well, it's hard, probably more difficult for us to clarify um, well, whether, whether yeah. you, you would be a, applicable to this unless we knew exactly what you were doing, but well, I, I, think I, that I could, feel the same way. Yeah. I'd like to know what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bill St. Jean. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bob? Through you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Don't sit down. <laughs> Somebody else might come after you too. Um, you uh, okay? So you're you're in the trailer business. Are you renting your trailers out 
I have one trailer that I rent. You rent one trailer out as a short-term accommodation? Yes. You're renting it for less than 30 days Yeah, but each it belongs month. in the Cherry Beach Park. Okay, no different than a friend of mine who also has a place in Cherry Beach. But we doesn't. didn't identify Cherry Beach. We identified camping facilities at Sandbanks. Yes. So I read, I read up yesterday about Quinty. Uh, in Quinty, and they were saying that trailer, tent trailers aren't uh, applicable to the tax. But just, just because I am familiar somewhat with what the, the sites there, they are single wide and double wide uh, trailers, right? Correct. They are, they are not, they are mobile, well, but they are, they are essentially fixed in place. Yes. Okay, just so everybody knows, that is a roofed accommodation, in my opinion. It's a what? I'm sorry? A roofed accommodation, in my opinion. Yeah, well, but uh, I was like I said, I was reading the Quinty report, and it said that those weren't taxed. So, well, we'll get to that when we have our exchange with with staff. Thank you, Bob. You've raised uh, I mean, an interesting. I'm not suggesting that that needs to be on the revenue stream, <laughs> but, but uh, I just want clarification. Is it a cash business? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My real name is not Bob Kelly. <laughs> All right. Our next commentator, please. Uh, my name's Michael Herman. I Hi, Michael. live in Ameliasburg. And uh, this will be my seventh year of doing Airbnb specifically. Uh, I've been self-employed as a, an artist for 45 years, so I've been through HST integrity commissions and audits and the whole thing, so sometimes I get the feeling, okay, I'm being attacked again. <laughs> and this particular time of year, my Airbnb operates for two months. It's my only sort of guaranteed revenue for the entire year, so when I get hit, at the beginning of the year in January, I wonder, is the property tax going to go up 8.7% again? I don't know. I got my first tax bill the other day, and I'm asking around, so how much did property tax go up this year? And some people say 4%. I don't know. I just don't get the information the way that I'd like to so that I can deal with my finances in the near future. And then if I don't happen to open an email, all of a sudden, ah, oh, I missed the STA meetings. Uh, all of a sudden it's just like, well, I've got this really invasive form that I have to fig uh, submit. And um, it's, uh, I, I read through it and I just see so many loopholes and questionable things in it. And it's just like, well, you know, this is like applying for life insurance. If they see one bad thing, all of a sudden flags go up everywhere. Am I going to get attacked again? I, I wonder about that. Just, and uh, now with Matt, is just that, uh, well, you know, taxes, they come and they go. And uh, I, at one, right now is the reservation time for setting rates. And uh, I fictitiously went on as being a guest at my own Airbnb. I, I run through Airbnb. And so up to this year, I'd been, I, my Airbnb hosts minimum of six. So an average night was 324. And it's very reasonable because my audience is families. And um, I'm through with bachelorettes. I can't handle that. Um, nor, nor can my neighbors. I, I have my neighbors created sheer hell for me and the stress of seven years. If I, if I knew now, seven years ago, how to keep everyone happy, I wouldn't have gone through hell for uh, many years. I think we can all admit and that we're tired of the blow up penis dolls for sure. Yes. <laughs> It's, um, it's, but I want to make sure you funny. get. No, but it's, it's, it's got its own sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, but I want to make sure you get your point in, and you're over your three minutes. Okay, so I want to make sure you get that point in. Um, is that, first of all, does the MAT program, will it one day be combined with the TS, the T, 
TSA. Uh, the, no, STA, thank you. And second of all is I did phone Airbnb and it is rocket science to extract their service fee from the accommodation fee. If you ask them, they say, well, if it's a pie, 70% goes here, 5% goes here. And yes, you're getting a, a, an operator that really I can't understand. So will there be a formula once there is a decision on a combined? This is for Todd, I guess. The way this goes is you ask questions here. OK, and sorry. And we're going to get to that part of us interacting with staff right after the comments from the audience. OK, I don't know how to legitimately extract that 4% from, I don't deal with money at all. That's why I deal with um, yeah. Airbnb, because I don't want any dealings with money. But I also need to know now how much I should compensate, add on to my reservations to cover the, uh, the loss that I'm going to have to take out of my Okay, fair soul. enough. I know staff is making notes about this, and uh, I th thank, you for, thank you for those comments, and we'll address them. I have more, but yeah. thank you. Um, before you go, though, in case there are questions from Council, are there oh, questions? Sir. No, I think you've done a good job. Thank you. Comments, next comments, please. Nice sweater. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Um, I'd like to uh, your thank name, please. Uh, your worship and uh, Mr. Chairman and Council for an opportunity to uh, say a few words. I think a little bit of history as much as anything. Could you just mention your name, Dave, just for the record? Oh, David Harrison, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so six years ago, roughly, uh, I was elected to this council with the same job that you have. At that point in time, the concern was we don't have enough beds in the county to, and some of you recall that, mm -hmm. to accommodate the uh, the uh, potential market. Uh, I have to compliment the uh, STAs for basically doing a, a great job of filling that job so we do have lots of tourists. My concern is that I think council has a, a duty to keep that sector not only viable, but competitive. The competition today for the dollar that the person in the city is coming out on their vacation, sure, it's easy enough to say he's going to pay it. But at the end of the day, he figures it all up, mm -hmm. and there's my bottom line. Will I do that, or will I go to uh, Mexico or the Caribbean or somewhere uh, for that period of time? I feel that the very fact you've only had 10% take up at this point in time indicates to me that we could see a downturn in the number of people that really want to participate in this with the uh, extra work and everything else involved. So my point to council is let's keep the sector competitive because all we have to do is look up Main Street this time of year and realize that if we're not competitive, and maybe some of the leaner years, that's where us being competitive will really pay off and keep, keep people here where they might uh, be somewhere else, or not go somewhere else where it's a little more expensive. That's yeah. just basically my thoughts on it. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Dave. Any questions? Any questions, yeah. Ernie? Thank you. David, you said 10% uptake. I what, thought they what, said 10 percent. What were you referring to, please? Something said earlier that 10 percent of supposedly 900 had licensed so far. Oh, well, just for clarification, um, I feel that I think they said that uh, a whole bunch had applied, but maybe only 10 percent had received their licenses. So oh, okay. there's 800. I think it's or almost, five, almost 50 percent. Almost 50 at this point. I, I would still expect a downturn in the end in the number. Uh, but then there might be some you don't get either. Okay. Anyway, that's all my uh, comment on it, and 
I'm probably the smallest of all the operators here, but nonetheless, uh, if some of the smaller people are uh, going to be bothered with it, then uh, it, it has to be sensible. Thank you. Any other questions? Thanks Thanks, very much. Dave. Thanks for taking the time. Next comment, please. Other, it's a bit like an auction going once. No, please. Thank you. Thank you. Your name, please. Hi, my name is Judy Plomer, um, Councillor Roberts, Your Worship, Councillors. This is my first time speaking at this podium. I'm an owner of a cottage uh, rental property down in uh, South Marysburg. I've been an owner for 19 years. Worked very hard all these years to build my business on my own with no help from anyone. I've got a loyal base of customers that come back to me year after year. I take bookings starting January 1st every year. I get my deposit by the end of January every year and they're booked through the summer. I have approximately 20 to 22 families booked solid. This came as a complete surprise to me. I was away last week. I heard about Rick's um, um, story in the newspaper and I thought, I can't, I can't believe this is happening at 4% tax. And I thought, how on earth am I going to handle this? How do I go back to my loyal customers and ask them for more money? It just didn't make sense to me at all. So I started inquiring with a few people around and asked them if they had ever heard of this. <laughs> They didn't really know about mm. it, mm. and uh, I thought, okay, why do I not know about it? I'm a cottage commercial property. I'm not an STA. I've been doing my own thing for all these years, and no one informed me. Nobody's called me. <laughs> Nobody's done anything. So I'm um, very concerned. I find it incredibly unprofessional to have, for me to have to go back to my customers and ask them for a tax after 19 years of business. And um, I just find the whole thing crazy. I mean, quite honestly, the county's never helped me with my business in all these years. I'm there building my business, working very hard constantly to, uh, you know, to bring the people here who spend a lot of money in the county. <laughs> And now you're asking me to ask these people for a 4% tax. Mm. I respectfully ask for everyone to think about delaying this tax implementation until next January, so at least it gives me time and many other small businesses to get this in order if this tax is to go through. It's my busiest time of year right now. We're working like crazy, refreshing, upgrading, doing everything. Just I, I just feel it was a real slap in the face. To people like me who have worked so hard and tried to do so much for Prince Edward County, I feel like an ambassador to this county all these years. Mm -hmm. And I've just been pushed aside, basically. Mm -hmm. I cannot go back and ask those people for more money. They're wonderful people. They love the county. And I feel that I'm going to have to take the, t the hit on that 4% tax. And I just don't think that's right. I also uh, agree with several other people here that um, I just don't understand how you can ask for money where you don't really know where that money's going. If my kids had ever come to me and said, Mom, I need 10 grand, and uh, my first question would be, what's it for? Where's it going? They didn't tell me. They're not getting the money. So really, it's just all backwards to me. Good. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> no, don't go away. There may be okay, questions. Okay, I'm not going to go yet. <laughs> Are there questions from... Councillors? Okay, thank you. Pardon? Oh, Mayor Ferguson, yes. Thanks, Judy. I just want to uh, just get an idea of the business. So you're not associated with a platform like no. Airbnb, VRBO, no. or anything else? Okay. Um, are, are, are your customers repeats every yes. year? Oh, yes. Like, I, I would say 70% of my business is repeat business because I've worked very hard working with these folks year after year after year. Okay, so you, you take the deposit when they make their reservation? I make take their the reservation. deposit. I'm so nice to these people, they book for next summer, and I don't worry about collecting deposit to the following January. You know, I mean, if you were to book any other holiday, people would be getting that deposit on booking. I always wait till January. I tell my folks, just wait. I'll call you in January. I get the booking. They send the deposit by the end of January. 
and then they pay full payment a month before they arrive. That's how I've operated my business all these years, and it's worked beautifully. Okay, just a quick follow-up. Yep, go ahead. So if um, there's no doubt the 4% MAT is coming, mm -hmm. do you think that the 4% is going to, uh, when your customers mm -hmm. are informed, mm -hmm. is going to have a profound effect on your business, given that yeah, the I, municipal accommodation tax is pretty commonplace in you know mm -hmm, urban centers mm -hmm. and certainly our surrounding. Mm -hmm. Steve, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if that will have. I don't think it will have a profound effect. But I cannot go back to them unless I know what this tax is going for. Mm -hmm. Where is it going? Mm -hmm. Where is it going? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Judy. Sir, uh -huh. I just want to. Are you done, Steve? You're done? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Councillor Mayor. Through you uh, to the deputant. So, you heard in the, um, in the presentation from our staff uh -huh. that the money would be going, that uh, half the money goes towards uh, marketing. Uh -huh and that the other half goes towards infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So those are, pretty, um, those are pretty straightforward things to let people know that half of it will go towards some sort of uh, tourism marketing mm -hmm. enhancement mm -hmm. and half will go towards infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to know maybe specifically what road or what, uh, what specific use the infrastructure, but that we will be that we'll be using it to help uh, mitigate the damage on our infrastructure and to help promote the, uh, the, the industry. Um, the letter I received from my councillor, because I reached out to Mr. Hirsch, um, was rather unclear on that and said that that decision would be made in September or in the fall. So I'm very confused about this. Okay, I was just wondering if mm -hmm, you, you did mm -hmm. you did hear the the, the mm -hmm. staff presentation though. Yes, that, I heard, that, I heard that now, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't I didn't have that information before okay. tonight. All right. So yes, I do understand what you're saying now, but it's still rather muddy waters, particularly as we've got uh, the Picton BIA coming tonight. You know, first in to put your name in for the money. So I would like to know where this money is going if I'm collecting that tax. Well, I know that staff is taking uh, notes with regard to the questions that have been raised by mm -hmm. the people coming to the podium to make very, in, very important comments. So mm -hmm. um, that will be the next part of our of our evening here. Okay. Have you are you are you confident that you've made the points you need to make this evening? Well, I think I have. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, anyone else like to step forward, please? My name is Ryan Krutzweiser, uh, live up Lake on the Mountain. Um, speaking on behalf of my family as well, we own Lake on the Mountain Resort. Um, so we are in the accommodation business. Um, I guess, Council, first and foremost, I'd like to say that contrary to what Rick said, I don't think every single operator out there is on board with the municipal accommodation tax. We are in fact not. First and foremost, I think we find it a discriminatory tax. We've got a lot of tourism businesses operating in the county and you're picking on a lot of small operators, um, family operated businesses that um, operate roof accommodation. I guess having said that, we're talking about from Todd Davies' proposal, uh, 836,000 as a conservative estimate. Um, we know that there are certain parties and maybe other parties that come on board uh, that will have their hands out for a portion of that money. I don't think, at least I can't see how there's been a lot of thought put forth to the administration of this collection. You're not dealing with Hiltons and Marriott's, you're dealing with mm -hmm. a lot of business owners that are required to self-remit this tax. And are you going to be doing audits? It's, it's conceivable to think that what little revenue is, is, is there that's left when split between tourism promotion operations and the county, there's not going to be a lot left. 
and then are we going to raise the tax? It's, I guess my final point is I would greatly encourage council to be more efficient in the revenue that they already have and spending that revenue. We've had ongoing conversations with the Economic Development Commission. They have a large budget, a budget larger than the $836,000 that you're talking about right now. There are places to look internally to drive more money for what's needed in terms of infrastructure spending. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Just important clarification. If the Community and Economic Development Commission has more than $890,000 in its annual budget, it must be somewhere in the Cayman Islands uh, because uh, it's a fraction of that. So just in terms of clarification. From but but let, let's open it up for questions. Other questions? Ernie. Yeah, thank you. To the chair, to you. Um, Ryan, is yeah. it? Ryan, thank you for your comments. Um, would you consider yourself a small uh, establishment then? Lake on the, is it Lake on the Mountain Resort? Or? It's Lake on the Mountain Resort, yes. Right. And you're, you, you object to this tax on the basis of, what's the basis of your objection then? Because you have to collect it and remit it? No, it's, uh, I, trust me, I collect and remit, we That's collect and remit a lot of taxes as is. Yeah. And I could, could, I should have brought the three pages from the Ministry of Finance that I have to submit every month right. for a collection of brewery taxes. And, mm -hmm. and just to put it in perspective, those brewery taxes, I have to pay more money to the Ministry of Finance just for provincial taxes there than it costs to actually produce the beer. It's, you, and, and this is one part, We've municipal, provincial, federal taxes, they just keep going up. You're adding another tax on all small businesses here. So my objection is it's a new tax and that's where it is. It's not strictly on the collection. I, it's gonna be more paperwork for sure, but my objection is it's a new tax and it's discriminatory. And there are a lot smaller businesses uh, than ours here that it's gonna impact in, in the county. Thanks, Ernie. Are there, are there other questions for him? Mayor Ferguson? Thanks, Ryan. Could you explain why you think it's discriminatory? Well, because it's just roofed accommodations. This is being applied on the basis of the, the provincial legislation, which designates just. I'm, I'm not saying it was discriminatory on council's part. It is. It is. No, no, uh, no, no, you, the, the tax is discriminatory, not, not us, right? <laughs> Yeah, when you term it a municipal accommodation tax, um, I think you have to step back and you have to look at the fact that I think there, are, as Rick has said, there's a lot of people that are a proponent of this tax. Um, but that's simply because they're not looking, I think, deep enough into it. It's, we're stretched as a county. We all, all of, all of the residents of the county understand that tourism is, you know, it's a benefit to us, but it is a burden on the infrastructure here. Now, this tax has, I think, in a lot of people's minds, been put forth to be uh, a problem solver of the infrastructure issues that we have. I think Janice Maynard said it. It's like the money that we're going to take in as, as council, our 50% after, you know, accounting for costs of collection, you know, will go to infrastructure. But... <laughs> Roofed accommodation is the one being taxed for this. It's not sandbanks. Mm. It's not, there, there are so many other, well, we operate tourism businesses that aren't roofed accommodation. And a lot of people come in from outside of the county to use our tourism businesses. So you're, a, you're, you're assessing a tax and it's discriminatory in that respect. It's just on roofed accommodation and it's not on all of the other operations of the county that surround the tourism industry, especially the sandbanks, because there's a lot of people that come in and use the beach and, and don't use, don't, don't go to the restaurants, don't use the roofed accommodation mm -hmm. and that sort of thing that are still aware on our infrastructure. Supplementary, yes. Um, 
Yeah, you know, the beach is a separate issue that we're sure. dealing with separately. Um, the um, yeah, all we can do is apply the tax on on as per the legislation, or not apply which, it. No, or not apply it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as you suggest, we do need the revenue, and that's the you know to to derive it from from the um, you know people that are, are using some of our resources as visitors, that's the, you know, the whole background of this. But it, anyway, it, it, thanks. You, you need the revenue. I, I, I would wish council would stop thinking that way. Take the revenue you have and spend it more wisely. I, it's, I've lived in the county now almost 20 years. Um, and I don't know how long each of the council members here, if they're longtime residents or our new arrivals here, but I, the fact in, in somebody wanted to, to, I guess, Bill, you wanted to call out um, my assessment of the 836 versus the budget for the economic development, but I mean, maybe we should look at those numbers a bit carefully because mm -hmm. Todd Davies' predecessor, Neil Carbone, we had had discussions with him about the budget in respect to some of the initiatives that they have taken on. Going back 20 years, I guess my point is, the county was not involved in economic development, tourism uh, promotion specific, specifically. That was something all the business owners internally took on. Now a lot of that has been absorbed into council, is now part of you know, the budget um, with which each taxpayer pays in too. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of tourism development can still be done outside of council and maybe find a revenue other ways. I think you, your points are well taken. We're looking forward to having some responses to all of these comments from staff. But you know, I, I don't want to mislead people. I think the largest budget that the Community Economic Development Commission has had in recent history has been somewhere over slightly over a hundred thousand dollars, and it's a it's not and it's certainly not that at this moment in time. Uh, also, I don't think we're looking at the the uh, eight hundred thousand or half of that as sort of the silver bullet for infrastructure. Uh, if Let's say it's you know four hundred thousand is half of that. Well, it's a, a million dollars a kilometer to redo a, properly redo a road in the county. So we're looking at places where we can incrementally um, make a contribution that uh, covers at least some of the costs that tourism uh, uh, visits on us in terms of infrastructure wear and tear. But I think your points are well taken. They were well thought out, and uh, the next part of this this meeting will will go to staff responding to some of those. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, anybody else? I did a going once. Oh, there, we got a going twice. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, the name is Ben Daverna. And maybe council or someone can clarify before this meeting is over about the tax and the timing of it because from what I understood Mr. Davis said in his presentation, if the tax is implemented on June 1st, that any bookings or revenue or stuff like that that happened before that will not be subject to the tax. And this thing with the tax being applied to the fees and whatnot only happens when council decides it is presumably June 1st. I just wanna, because there seems to be confusion on it. Some people seem to be thinking that the tax is going to apply on something that happened before it was implemented, which obviously can't be the case. It, it's my uh, uh, fault, not yours. Could you just re-mention your name, please? Oh, Ben Daverna. Ben, thanks, Ben. Yeah. Um, I, we're going to come to that part with regard okay. to, to, to staff. And it's but just a, to clarify that, what a, exactly is going to happen? It's a and good the other clarification. Clarif and the other clarification, who is collecting the tax? Is it the homeowners or the platforms, the vacation platforms? Um, let's see if, if my answer holds up once staff gets the floor, but I think it's going to be, in the end of the day, a combination of, of platforms and individual combination providers. And uh, I also think, and we'll see what staff has to say about uh, 
about this, that uh, if if uh, those accommodations are paid for in full before June 1st, 2020, they will be exempt from from the H, the uh, the four percent. Okay, that's what I thought I heard. Just to that's what okay. I thought I heard too. So we'll we'll find out soon. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so I've done going once, I've done going twice, going three times. Good. Okay, thank you very much. Madam Clerk, do I need a motion to receive uh, comments from the audience? Good. Could I have a mover and a seconder? Okay, Phil and uh, Kate. All those in favor? Thank you very much. And thank you for everyone taking the time to make those comments. And it's not always easy getting up to a podium. Um, this now turns us to 7.1, the report of the Community Development Department dated February 27, 2020, regarding short-term accommodation licensing update. Todd, is that you? Uh, to the chair. Were you napping? No, I was uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit. Uh, no, uh, you, would you like me to speak to the report? Well, are there, first of all, there, does anyone have any questions up here in the horseshoe? Are we, are we okay with just receiving it? All right, can I have a motion to receive? Sure. Bernie and Stuart. All those in favor? Oh, just receiving. Right. Just receiving, just receiving. yes. Uh, this is a Margaretson Bailey motion that council receive report CDD-16 slash 2020 for information. All those in favor? No, nope, don't. Okay. I'll ask if there's any questions. Are there any questions? Kate, do you have a question? Uh, oh, uh, po possibly. You were reading my mind? No, I thought you were waving your hands. No, no, I was adjusting my glasses. Oh, okay. But, but while we're on the I'll topic. I'll come back to you. Okay. Anybody on this side have a question? Bernie, go ahead. Yes, I'm going to ask for clarification on, Todd, on the, um, the mat tax will be applicable and you've said STAs as well as inns, hotels, motels, B&Bs, and any other accommodators offering short-term roofed accommodation. So the last part, can you define that, the short-term, because we had a question about trailers and, mm -hmm. and things that are pulled in with wheels but are left there for and rented out. Or, so if you could just expand on that to, to help with some of the questions we received. Uh, through the chair, is this related to specifically to the SDA report or is this related to the next report on taxation? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm happy to answer that, but maybe it's more appropriately answered yeah. in the next round. I'll keep that in the back of my mind, Ernie, and I'm happy to respond to you at the time. I'll keep it in mind, yeah. Thank you. Good. We have something to look forward to. Kate. Uh, I, I do have a question regarding STAs um, because the chair put it into my head that I should have a question regarding STAs. So um, I'm currently wondering, uh, first off, do we, so there are two questions. First, do we know when we're going to be revisiting the bylaw to, to regard its efficacy, we're not doing that tonight, I understand. Uh, but do we, or have we scheduled, or so do we have an idea in mind of when we will be reviewing the policy itself? Uh, and second, concerning whole home rentals, are we currently scanning the market uh, to determine if we're seeing more new ones enter the market? Um, prior to them registering, are, um, sort of have we been observing that over the past couple of years to see what the actual arc is to see if, um, to, to see where the population of whole home SDAs has, has begun since we embarked on this journey and where it is now, or are we just sort of taking in applications? Uh, through, the, through the chair to Councillor Kate, um, we are, the plan is to review this uh, SCA policy was one year after it went into effect and licensing started to happen, which happened in November. Our anticipation is to before the end of the year, uh, beginning of Q4, possibly to- This year? This year. Oh, okay, great. To um, come back before council 
to have reviewed this policy and this uh, program uh, and potentially offer some modifications um, as is appropriate. Uh, with regards to monitoring the arc of STA or whole home Sorry, STAs I did not in the community, that well. no. Uh, no, that's okay. Um, certainly, it's something that we've been keeping an eye on generally. However, uh, at this particular stage, the uh, uh, staff, the bylaw officers, are staff that are responsible for the licensing program. Uh, as you, as could probably bear witness in the numbers, have received a whole lot of applications at this stage and are going through that process of doing the licensing. Uh, and so we're really sort of focused, I think, on getting as many of the properties uh, with licenses in hand prior to the beginning of the season. And just to be clear, um, I know that uh, there have been comments from the audience that only 10% of the businesses have, have been licensed. However, uh, we, as long, provided that a, an application has been received and deemed complete uh, or, or has come in, so we have 761 of those, not 84. We have 84 licenses in hand. However, the inspection process has started predominantly in, uh, as of January 1. So in a, uh, and that number was cultivated the day that I wrote the report, which isn't today, uh, was probably in, in mid-February. So we were probably six weeks into the actual inspection phase. Um, we are, I didn't ask this morning and I probably should have and I apologize, but I should, I would have a better sense as to how many licenses are in hand today comparative to when this report was written. Um, the most important piece is when we contemplated the, this program itself, in order to make it cost neutral, um, and the way that our, our pricing structure was was created, uh, that contemplated having 900 licenses uh, or licensed establishments. Uh, so I think the big message today is that we are at 761 applications and relatively confident that we will be, we haven't, we will be able to grant the lion's share of those. This, and, and I would be confident that we would get over 900 before the end of the year, before the season actually kicked into high gear. So I, I would suggest that it's done its job. We've got enough. Uh, and some of the observations, I think, are in the report uh, for you. And in, and in terms of the number uh, in the community, I mean, we'll have a better sense. I think once we get all the licenses done, then we'll have a sense as to who is operating unlicensed, uh, which will then start enforcement on other pieces. OK, you have a supplement? That was actually my supplemental. <laughs> so I think Todd sort of covered that. Um, are you currently, or is Steph currently scanning uh, platforms to sort of be aware of what's out there? To do that, to co to try to determine who's unlicensed and who isn't? We, uh, or is that sort we of too we don't, early for we don't, that? Uh, we don't have an individual dedicated to scanning platforms. We have a program that's dedicated to scraping pro platforms to get okay. a sense as to which what's out there. Um, I think getting the business, the focus at this particular moment is yes. getting the licensing up and running and the program sort of rolled out. I think once we have a sense as to how many business, how many of these uh, organi uh, businesses are licensed, uh, uh, once we start this sort of season, then we'll have a better opportunity to sort of see who's trying to operate on license That's at great. this stage. Thank you. That was really helpful. Ernie. Thank you. This is a question that I should have asked before. But, um, Todd, and I, it's, it's related to Councillor McNaughton's question, and, it's, and it was something that struck me when I read this, is that the inspections seem to be lagging in terms of the applications, and maybe that was just the timing of when you read the report, but we did have a comment tonight about whether the licenses and the inspections that go with them would be catching up to the June 1st MAT tax date. and mm -hmm. I. And I'm curious about that. Are, 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 we, are, are our inspections ramping up to be able to catch up to the number of applications, or is that lagging? Or do, can you comment on that, please? Uh, so the Chair, Councillor Margenson, um, the, the inspection process didn't start till January 1st. We started taking applications in November for uh, grandfathered or, or pre-existing mm -hmm. uh, STAs. Uh, so we had the benefit of two months before the season started, before the, the actual inspection process started. Uh, that process has uh, certainly been ramped up. Now uh, we have a full complement of staff uh, to do the work. Uh, we are confident that uh, by the beginning of a high season, we will have all of uh, the inspections completed. However, I think it's important to, to note that 
um, regardless of inspection, the fact that someone's uh, uh, submitted an application uh, and signed on, signed off on it, um, and it's deemed complete with all the the information in hand, they are allowed. The STAs are, are are permitted to operate under those conditions, uh, and so we would deem them an operating STA at that point. Uh, so while we may have only inspected 84, and probably over, uh, we're probably up. Uh, pretty good in the last couple of weeks more. Um, that didn't sound very professional, I apologize. But uh, I would be confident to say that we have, um, we're on track. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Ferguson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Todd, one of the comments you make in the, uh, in the report is number of bedroom and septic capacity challenges most common complaint. Um, is there any way to quantify, you know, of, you know, how common a complaint that is? Like, is it, you know, every other application or is it all applications? I'm just, because if whole homes are being rented out and, um, you know, and that involves a living room and four bedrooms and septic capacity is only for three bedrooms, um, clearly, someone's going to have a problem, and if, if the STA is located on the, you know, near the shoreline, it could be a significant problem. I, I just like some sense of how prevalent that particular issue is, septic capacity. Uh, through the chair to your worship. Um, I don't have a I don't have a specific f number figure. I just when I uh, uh, spoke with the SCA team and the uh, chief building uh, official Andy Harrison, uh, I asked him what the most common challenge that they're receiving, and his feedback to me was rural uh, businesses who are advertising or have advertised in the past for 20 plus people, but have septic capacity for. Uh, three to four bedrooms, six to eight individuals. Uh, and so really what we've, I think what we're accomplishing, uh, part of the uh, benefit of this program uh, will, will have been uh, uh, when we sort of reflect on that going forward and certainly reflecting on it today, is that we've really uh, helped sort of bring down the number of sort of large party house, 20 plus uh, 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 Rentals that are available in the market, uh, and they're more sort of they're they're more sort of compliant with what their septic capacity is, and so we're we're helping to admonish uh, some of those risks. I don't have an exact figure, but I could actually I could get it for you relatively quickly and provide it to council. Are there other questions before we move to the vote? The motion's on the table. The council received report CDD 16 2020 for information. It has a mover and a seconder. All those in favor? That passes. Thank you. We now move on to 7.2, report of the Community Development Department, dated February 27, 2020, regarding the implementation of a municipal accommodation tax. Can I have a mover and a seconder to get on the floor? Bill St. Jean and Kate. Uh, let's give Steve one. Steve Ferguson. Thank you very much. It's on the floor. Are there questions? Um, Madam CAO. Hello, uh, through the chair. I would just like to clarify, in Todd's presentation, he said that this was going to come to council on March 10th. Uh, that was when we were having this special meeting last week. Because we delayed the meeting due to weather, that is actually going to council on March 24th. So it is not going on Tuesday. It is going on the 24th. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. That's very important. Thank you. Other, other questions? Phil, do you have a question? No. Would you, you like, like me to read the motion? Read Are you going to read the motion? Yes, please. Why not? <laughs> that way everybody is clear what it says. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, St. Jean McNaughton motion. No, sorry. Ferguson. Mayor Ferguson motion. Uh, that council receive report CDD 15 2020 for information and that council approve the implementation of a municipal accommodation tax for all short-term accommodations in Prince Edward County at a rate of 4% and that council approve the implementation of a municipal accommodation tax to take effect on June 1st, 2020 and that council approve that the municipality is to act as the collector of the municipal accommodation tax 
and that Council endorse the approach proposed by staff for Phase 2 that will focus on public and industry consultation to help determine how MAT funds will be spent and allocated with a report to Council in Fall 2020 and that staff be authorized <coughs> to take all actions necessary to implement the Municipal Accommodations Tax Program as outlined in this report on the basis of it being a full cost recovery program. Thank you, Councillor St. Jean. Thank you. Are there questions from councillors? Just question. your question, the one we've been waiting for? Yeah. He's got it. He's got it memorized. Uh, actually, I was going to ask for the chair if Councillor Margetson could ask that question again. Sure. <laughs> so you define. Microphone. Oh, yeah. The definition. Sorry. Yeah, what was applicable, mm -hmm. saying that, um, you know, that STAs as well as inns, hotels, motels, B and Bs, and any other accommodators offering short-term roofed accommodation. So it was the last part that mm -hmm. would would we would benefit, or I would, of a definition of that, and it relates to Mr. Kelly's question about trailers, I think. Yes. And then Councillor St. Jean added something about things being pulled in and left there and rented out for less than 30 days. So that, that's what I was hoping we could get more explanation on. Absolutely. Uh, through you to the chair. Um, so that is the definition that we've sort of accepted as, a, as an opportunity or availability. I think the challenge we have with regards to trailers, trailer parks, campgrounds, uh, anything that would be considered a short-term accommodation, if it's not licensed or doesn't have an, a business number attached to it, like a commercial enterprise, uh, it's going to, from a from a collection standpoint, it will be challenging to determine what those businesses are. Um, my suggestion would be that we uh, remove uh, at this particular moment uh, anything that has a hazy definition. So if it's not a licensed business. Uh, or a licensed STA um, that we revisit it when we go through the STA licensing at the end of the year uh, to potentially include them. Um, otherwise, we will be we, we, we will require those businesses to voluntarily come forward. Mm. Okay. Any other questions, Janice? Please. Thank you. Um, through you, um, just I, the question is: Is we can um, the definition of a roofed accommodation because some travel trailers are are trailers and some some um, trailers are um, are not uh, are not really considered a trailer. They're considered a mobile home, and there's certain specifications. I know that we've got some on properties, right? So I know kind of the difference between a Z240 and a Z241. So if we say roofed accommodations, and then we can we can firm up that uh, definition a little bit on what is a trailer and what uh, what isn't. Um, so my question is, so we've been at this now for three years, and we've been watching and doing. A, I know that uh, staff, and I'd like to thank staff for the for the work that they've put into this report, into the STA, STA regulations. This has been a long and uh, detailed journey, and I know part of that is um, kind of keeping an eye on what uh, other municipalities were doing because we had there was a desire from the last council that. Um, led over into this council that we find a way of generating some revenue. So uh, I thank staff for that. Uh, and part of that research, I'm just wondering, because I, um, we often like to look at our, our near neighbors, both uh, Belleville and Quinty West. And um, I guess just for, um, for information, um, the, the city of Quinty West actually passed their bylaw on June 3rd of 2019 for implementation for July 1st. So they had a, uh, it, was a it was an almost immediate from the time they passed the, uh, hmm. the bylaw. And they have a really nice um, kind of question and answer thing. And one of them, one of the questions, um, what if you have existing contracts uh, with a fixed room rate and it specifically says, um, the municipal tax applies even if provided through a corporate contract. 
So there's, and then uh, the city of Belleville, they had uh, uh, just a slightly longer, um, a slightly longer term between the passing of the bylaw. Theirs was, um, theirs was in March for a, uh, for a, for a June, or sorry, for a 1st of July deadline. And I don't think there was any, there wasn't any exemptions in that case either. So, I mean, what we're doing is not out of the, not out of the box. It seems to be pretty commonplace. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I guess my question, we did look at other municipalities and how they were, how they were implementing and operating their municipal accommodation tax. Yes. Uh, through the chair to Councillor Maynard, yes, uh, we, we've been in contact with other municipalities. We've been monitoring how other municipalities in and around us. That's how we came up with things like a 4% rate because uh, that's what our neighboring communities have passed. Um, and I'd also like to point out from the collection and remittance perspective, uh, the tax would go into place, the proposal is the tax would go into place on June 1st. Um, we, would, we would likely... Um, start the remittance process uh, at the end of quarter three. So uh, the tax would exist, the, the businesses would be collecting it. However, they wouldn't have to remit to the municipality until October 31st, 2020, which is a, a substantial period of time uh, from the passing of the tax to when it actually has to be paid to the municipality. Um, so. I think it, you know, by the by virtue of the fact that we're the businesses will have to collect it June first. They're not having to remit it right away uh, back to the municipality. There's some time to get their heads wrapped around how that works. Um, that's my two cents. Are there other council questions, Kate? Leave out Ark, please. Actually, this question is regarding an arc of no. Um, so I it did. I can't remember if it was in conversation with you, or if it was in the report. When or if maybe I just looked it up a few weeks ago when I was trolling Airbnb. Um, when when we see listings on Airbnb, it does have the price listed and says plus applicable taxes. Is that's correct? Is if memory serves. Or have you looked recently either? Uh, I haven't been on Airbnb. I mean, I've been on Airbnb in the past, but I haven't been on it in the last 30 days to tell you okay. if it says. But I, I know that booking um, through those kinds of platforms do state plus applicable taxes. It usually when says it, plus uh, applicable, very quite clearly. Yes. Okay. So um, I, I just wanted to clarify uh, for myself. Uh, and I also just wanted to say for a few people who were concerned, this was when I was um, knocking on doors during the campaign, this was a common topic of conversation for me, including people who didn't know that uh, we were considering it and were quite angry that he, we hadn't considered it and, and I was able to inform them that it was under consideration. So I do want to clarify that for anyone um, who was surprised. There are other people who've been watching a little bit closely. Um, and this is sort of sort of part of the symbiosis that exists between a community and one of its industries because the, the development of this place as a destination does come with price tags and there are significant social price tags as well as the infrastructure infrastructure price tags and I just um, I think this is a really wonderful step and I, I enjoyed reading this report and once again I want to go uh, comment on the quality of the reports that we've been receiving and uh, I don't know who to extend this compliment to everybody that um, it seems to me that there's an emphasis on, on accessibility and plain language being applied in reports in a way that has not been before and I like the progression and just wanted to comment on that so thanks it's awesome good comment Kate good uh, other I just wanted to, uh, through the chair to council, I just wanted to also be clear about what is being taxed uh, or what the proposal is for taxation. We're only proposing a tax on the accommodations fee that wouldn't include any sort of service fees um, that have to be paid and or cleaning fees or damage deposits. I think I had stated in the presentation previous, but I just want to be very clear that this tax only allows us to charge for a night's stay. 
the, what the accommodation cost is not, or charges, not all the other fees that are built into some of these rentals. Um, just for clar clarification purposes. Yes, thanks. Other questions? Uh, John, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to, um, to Todd. You mentioned briefly in your presentation that a delay in implementation and the common date we heard in, in submissions from the audience tonight was January the 1st, that that would result in a, a financial hit. Could you elaborate a little more on, on what, what we see that hit being if it was to be delayed to January? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Hirsch, I, I mean, I, I don't have a quantification figure. However, I would like to su suggest that uh, I know f if I was an independent business person and I was marketing my business and I knew that um, um, a tax was coming and I could save my customers 4%, I would market heavily between now and a far extended period uh, to book and pay ahead because the reality is we don't have the mechanism. We don't have a mechanism to say we're going to start imposing the tax January 1st, but any bookings you take after whatever other arbitrary date will be subject to that tax. It's no different than a common sales tax. So if I purchase a service or a good the day before something like an HST comes into effect, but that service or good happens after the HST comes into effect, if it's bought and paid for, I don't have to pay. Ta the, I don't pay the taxes on it, and so uh, that is would be the concern: is that any bookings that you would that the businesses would receive that are paid in full, or the portion that has been paid prior to uh, them coming into effect, would be then not uh, uh, eligible to be taxed, or that portion would not be eligible to be taxed, and so we would be leaving. Um, Financial benefit on the table for the 2021 tax season is is really what I'm driving at. I don't I can't give you a general quantification as to how much money that's going to cost, uh, but it will be a pro proportion. I we, we would anticipate or we readily anticipate that. Uh, businesses that are uh, taking online bookings, uh, if a June 1st accommodation tax went into place, or it went into place on June 1st, that there would be a large swath of uh, holiday rentals that have been already booked and paid for by that particular period of time, and that they would not be eligible for taxes. You okay, John? Do you have a question? Yes, Phil? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Todd, you just mentioned that the tax go only goes on the accommodation part. Is there any fear of people lowering their accommodations to 10 bucks a night with cleaning fee of like 120? Like, is there any fears to, to that part? If you only have to, the other side of the coin, you know, like, oh, our accommodation's only $10, you got high cleaning fees. I, I don't know, like, is there a fear? Because we need so much revenue to make this make this a practical thing or else there's no sense even talking about it. Let's be realistic about it. If we don't make or if we don't have some money come back in. But honestly, like you're talking about marketing, you're worried about everybody booking before June 1st. My head's going, I'm not in marketing at all, but I'm gonna sell my room really cheap and just have high service fees. So is there a fear to that or how can we get around that not happening, I guess is my question. Uh, through the chair of Councilor Prinson, that wasn't a fear before now, but now it's become a fear. Uh, no, I, it was not something that we generally contemplated uh, prior to. Uh, you're bringing it up at this particular moment, so uh, uh, the industry thanks you probably at this stage. Uh, however, I would suggest that. I mean, we're trying to we're trying to work with businesses that want to legitimately do business, and I don't imagine that anyone. I mean, if if you're a tourism business in this community and your goal is to not or to avoid having to to have your guests pay taxes, which are common in surrounding communities, uh, it's not a fear that I generally have at this stage. But but thank you for raising it. It's something that we will have to significantly look into. Go ahead. Yeah, like I'm not trying to, I'm just making sure we have everything lined up so it doesn't come back, you know, to, to bite us later on. Because seeing, you know, seeing the fee of ha hiring the person to to do this project and stuff, I just want to make sure it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be worth it. Go ahead, Todd. 
Uh, through you, Councillor Roberts, uh, there was a series of questions that were asked of uh, at the podium that you suggested we would have some responses yes. to, uh, and I'm going to go down the the list and do my best to respond. Todd, before you do that, I just sure. want to make sure that Council has uh, is Council okay with you've asked your questions. Okay, go ahead, Todd. Okay. Um, so the first question or the first request was from uh, uh, the executive director or the manager of the Picton BIA, Sarah Dorian, uh, asking that the BIA, BIA be included as a benefactor for the opportunity to increase the revenues. Um, that's not something that we typically contemplated. Um, they. So it would be something that we, they're, they're not cl currently collecting uh, municipal accommodations tax um, or a destination marketing fee, sorry. Uh, it's not something we had anticipated. Um, and it's, it's uh, something that we would have to get back to council on, uh, what their eligibility is. Uh, Mr. Kelly asked a clarification regarding Cherry Beach and the trailer that he rents uh, there. Um, so I would suggest that those types of businesses uh, be part of a discussion we have around short-term accommodations and the licensing thereof, which would then give us some uh, better understanding and an ability to collect taxes from those types of businesses. The challenge we have with a, an organi a, a campground or, or, or a trailer park like Cherry Beach is that most of their rentals uh, are not for less than 30 days. Most of them are for more than 30 days. And so we have a very challenging, it would be much more challenging time for a collection perspective to determine which sites are only being rented for a portion of the time, uh, what, what, which uh, long-term tenants are subletting for shorter periods of time, and, and that's something we would have to work to get our heads wrapped around, and we would come back to you in the future area. Mm -hmm. Mr. Herman asked uh, if the MAT would be combined with the STA licensing fee, uh, and then a formula to understand the percentages. Um, I guess the short answer is no. We wouldn't uh, collect. We wouldn't uh, have the licensing fee and, and the annual tax remittance combined together. Um, the licensed businesses would be responsible for submitting their own taxes, much the same as they're responsible for submitting HST uh, on the revenues that they bring in as well. Um, I I don't know the formula that Airbnb uses. Uh, they are a private entity, and so it makes it a little bit challenging to better understand what what is accommodation versus what is fees for them. Uh, and we're not a private business. It's the responsibility of a private business to sort out what those are. Uh, former Councillor Mr. Uh, Harrison uh, asked that we keep the sector competitive to help the local economy. Uh, and I will say this, that, uh, and I think Councillor Maynard has expressed this already in this round of questioning, uh, we are the only uh, jurisdiction in our, uh, of our surrounding neighbours that don't charge uh, municipal accommodations tax. So arguably by virtue of charging the tax, we are com more competitive with our neighbours who are already charging said tax. Uh, Mrs. Plummer spoke to the logistics of implementing a MAT tax uh, as a small business owner and asked uh, uh, if the 4% tax and remittance uh, asked about that tax. And I think the clarification is uh, bookings that are booked and paid for would be uh, not subject to the tax uh, if paid for prior to June 1st. And, and I can appreciate her desire not to go back to her guests and ask for the tax, but it's relatively commonplace. Um, Ryan from Lake on the Mountain asked uh, if the collection would result in audits. That is one tool that's available and will be part of the bylaw that uh, will be available to the Director of Finance to get a better understanding uh, if necessary, although it's not what we would expect to be common practice. And then the final question. And Mr. Davino asked uh, about MAT tax and timing, and if the bookings uh, occurred before the bylaw is passed, would they be exempt from the bylaw? So if the booking occurs before and is paid for, then it wouldn't be subject to the tax uh, after the, the date it was passed. 
So those are the questions as I know them. If you have any other questions, happy to answer them. Thank you. Well, I think I asked Council if they had any further questions. I don't recall any. But Kate, if you have an urgent question, please put it forward. Uh, just regarding your response about the BIA. So the request to the BIA, so it, clearly it doesn't fit into the same category as the municipality or state PEC, but projects that the BIA and village associations do around the county in Consecon, Bloomfield, they they would, f uh, if, if the um, the public consultation deems that d downtown areas are desirable to focus some energy. There are projects that they undertake that would fit in with the de uh, destination development mandate, would they not? Uh, through you to Councilor Minan, uh, probably they could, um, but uh, that's not what we're talking. I mean, we're proposing no, a phase two consultation point. and a report back that would sort of address some of those concerns yes. and issues. And so, uh, I mean, I, I would anticipate that we will find lots of entities that are, have their hand out looking for some of these funds. Uh, and Absolutely. it will be up to Council to sort of determine how that, uh, how they want to allocate the money for marketing purposes. Yeah, I just wanted so to it's, clarify. It's, I, and I, I appreciate that, but but uh, it's not something that we're contemplating today. Really, we're looking, uh, if we don't have a tax in place and we're not collecting it, there's no money to divvy up and there's no way, there's no uh, concern as to how we're gonna deal with that. So I think uh, um, while I know some people have been concerned about the fact that we don't have a clear picture as to what that outcome looks like as a holistic piece, um, I also think that uh, biting off smaller bites uh, to sort of get through this process uh, is appropriate. And so I think our phase one, suggestion is to establish the tax, implement it, and then let's have a conversation with the industry as to how we should spend it appropriately. I absolutely agree. I'm just asking for down the road because because of what you said. So no, I think this is the right way to roll this out. Absolutely start start with this and then go out and consult. It's it's great, thanks. Is there a question down here? Bernie? Thank you. Yeah. I'll go. I, I'm still not clear, Todd, exactly how we will communicate to all those that would be required to collect and remit this tax. And I'm thinking about people that, you know, aren't aware of this, if what our communication strategy is, if you know what it is, and how we would inform, and, and I'm wondering about you know, campgrounds that have cottages as well as trailer sites. And, you know, the, it is fairly complicated, I think, to try and make sure everyone's aware of it. Or maybe that you have a strategy um, within the next, what was it, 90 days? You know, for people who aren't informed or don't read the Wellington Times. Uh, this is the chair to Councillor Margetson. Uh, so we've been uh, working with the corporate communications officer uh, to, to develop a campaign that we can roll out to the STA owners and operators that will outline the implementation of the tax, options and process for remittance uh, when it's prepared to go. Um, any of the businesses, uh, the commercial businesses, we have an understanding uh, specifically who the commercial businesses are in this community and all of the licensed operators not just the ones that have licenses in hand, but all the 761 that have applied for, we have contact information for, and so we would be com sending out communications directly to those organizations. Does that answer your question? Just, does that cover all the ones that I'm contemplating, that, like the cottage rentals? I'm thinking in my ward around Consecon Lake, and um, I've, spoke, I've spoken to a few that weren't aware of it, so I just wondered. They so, so through the chair to Councillor Margetson, our intention would be to to um, contact every commercial business that is in cottage rental or hotel, motel, in th through the Bed and Breakfast Association the best we can. To by mail. The, by mail uh, and uh, through communication strategies like. Okay. Was there a campaign. question down here? Question to staff, and then I'm, I'd like to ask Mayor Ferguson, would you like to make some closing comments before we go to the vote? After, after yeah, okay. Please. Thank you.
So there were some questions from, I was waiting to see what answers we got before I uh, continued with the, with the questions. And maybe, maybe this information can be available before uh, council so that we can have it at council. But I would like a, a comment on the um, not being able to, you know, once you've advertised a rate, not being able to collect the tax, because that seems to be contrary to what I'm reading in other, uh, so if staff has any comment on that, uh, at this point, because it seems to be contrary what we're seeing in other, in other bylaws and other communications from, uh, from staff, just so that council's not overly concerned that that's, a, uh, that that's a game changer. And I guess my other question is, like, if, if you're a business, what is, our, is it our responsibility to make sure that every single business is contacted, or in your opinion, is it the businesses responsibility to know what the current regulations are in their uh, municipality in which they're operating. Because I mean, we the chances that we're gonna be able to reach out to every single business. With respect, Councilor Maynard, I think that's a bit of a rhetorical question and it puts staff well, in an awkward position, I think. Yeah, okay, so the first one is. The first well, one's great. The first one's fine, then we can answer the first one. But. Uh, so the chair, Councillor Maynard, absolutely will do some research to find out, uh, to talk about or see what other, how other jurisdictions have handled the sort of booking versus full payment issue mm -hmm. uh, and be able to report back uh, at the council meeting on uh, March, March 24. 24. Thank you. All right, uh, that's it for questions from council. Um, Mayor Ferguson, if you have some wrap up remarks, this is the time to do them. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, no question. Um, no, I just wanted to uh, to Todd and, and the people that worked on the uh, on the report. I think it's I think it's great. I I think we we understand that any kind of tax is unpopular, but this uh, the concept of the municipal accommodation tax is not not new. This is something that, uh, as we heard, was under was uh, started in 2017. We um, we started talking about it as council in 2018, and it's been an ongoing conversation um, amongst council members and, and with the public that this is coming and that it is coming in 2020. Um, I, I view it as the appropriate thing to do. I view it as, as um, something that um, is applied only to uh, our our visitors and people using our um, our tourism accommodation. Um, yes, there are going to be some administrative um, uh, issues that the uh, the accommodators are going to have to attend to, and whether the whether this was applied, whether it's applied on June first, October first in 2022 uh, many of those challenges would remain so i um i support staff's recommendation that this be implemented um, for the june 1st date and we go through the consultation process as to when and how the funds will be used but i i todd you did a uh, a terrific job getting this getting this report before us and um I'm, I'm supportive of moving this forward. All right, your three minutes are up. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we've, the motion is on the table. All those in favor? I would interpret that as unanimous. Thank you. I'd now like a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Stuart, seconded by Bill. Stuart, could you read the motion to adjourn, please? And this is a Bailey St. Jean motion that this meeting now adjourn at 9.14 p.m. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much.